What's up everybody, it's Maddie, and today we are doing a soldering tutorial. I'm gonna show you guys how to do a clean, beautiful solder joint. And I've got some spare boards laying around and figured I put together a little tutorial in case you're having trouble and you wanna up your game. I'll show you a couple tips and what equipment I'm using. Let's dive in. All right, so the equipment I'm using is some TBS solder. This stuff's really good and it's actually a really nice size. It goes onto the tip really well. TS-100, pretty standard issue, although I believe there's a newer version out there. I've got a semi-sharp tip on it. I just use this for everything. It's been really rock solid. And then you're gonna want a method of cleaning the tip. So either you could buy a kit that has like a little cup on the side with some steel wool in it, or you could do what I did and just take an Altoid tin and shove a bunch of steel wool into it. I've literally been using this same steel wool for like five years and it's been great. So I just clean off in here and solder. And this is actually great too because it goes wherever I go. So if you need something to travel with, it just comes along for the ride. In case you're wondering how I keep the iron safe while I'm working, I usually just rest it on there. I also have a little piece of Velcro on it, and some Velcro on this. So when I'm actually in the field and I'm done working, I'll usually just like Velcro it to that. That way it doesn't really touch anything or I'm, I can be mindful of it, I can move it around. It doesn't really go anywhere. If you know me at all, you gotta have a set of these tweezers. These are some cheap iFixit tweezers. I've had them also forever. I think I have some backups here. I'll put a link down in the, the description for all this stuff, but these are an absolute lifesaver. I use them for basically any soldering that I do. These things are great because they're super sharp and you can really just grab even the smallest wires you can get them right where you need to. You can kind of just place it in place and well, you'll see, let's do it. I've got a, also a little board holder here and some cheapo thing that I found on Amazon. And it's cool, it's got little adjustable thing mabubops. So we'll start with some, basically some re-soldering because a lot of the tutorials out there is people soldering new stuff, but that's not really that realistic because in the world of FPV, you're always out there fixing stuff. So I figured this tutorial is gonna be mostly new and existing things. I'll wire up some motors. I'll wire up some of the thinner wires here. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. We're gonna set our iron to max. I just, I don't, I always just put it on 752. Not gonna lie. I just put it on the max and that's what it always goes to. So when we hit around 500 degrees, that's when the solder, the solder actually melts. So we're already at six. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean the tip and just dab it in there. And you'll see it's already nice and clean. Gorgeous. Now you're gonna wanna take your solder. Just need a little bit. Got a clean tip. And I generally don't like to work above any of the electronics that I'm working on because it is very easy for you to to wet the tip of the iron and drop something that's gonna bridge one of the connections down below and you'll smoke your flight controller before you even take off. So don't do that. Always work to the side. So we're just gonna add a little bit here. You're gonna wanna use a fan or something uh, just so you're not breathing this stuff in. But you see, I've got a little bit on the tip and then what we're gonna do We'll use this fresh pad here. Is we're just gonna touch it to it and move away. And you really don't wanna spend a lot of time holding it in position because you can definitely damage these pads, but you just need a little bit of solder and you touch it and you move away. You just need it long enough that you're doing the job and then you, you're off. 
Is this one a trick one? Sometimes you get a trick pad. Yeah, this one does not want to stick. Oh, there we go. If you ever bridge it like this, where you're like, oh my God, what do I do? Just picture where the, like you can look at where the pads start and end and you just run it through down the middle. You'll be able to clean it right up. You can see that already. You might have to reapply, but you can get it right back to what it should be. And then you grab your handy dandy tweezers like I do and you come in and you're gonna also wanna make sure that you have some solder on the tip of the wiring. So let's say you were doing fresh wiring, which we can actually do right now, is you would cut the end off. I usually just use my nail. Now that's a very long piece. So what I'll do is I'll twist it and then I'll usually trim it again. Again, don't trim anything above the circuitry. So I've got a nice little nug. And then you're gonna want to make sure that you have a clean tip, get a little more solder on the tip. And then I like to just touch it to it because one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they don't have solder either on the wire that they're about to attach or they don't have solder on the pad itself. And if you don't have either, you're going to have a bad time. So you're looking for that nice little shine to it, just like that. So now we've got good solder on here. And let's say we want to set it up on the hardest pad, which is the closest one to the connector here. And you're just gonna put it above the solder joint and you have a little solder on the tip of the iron and then you're just gonna touch it to it. And you're trying to touch the wet part to the top of the wire and melt it into place. And if you're not happy with that, it's a little hard to see. You could just come back, hold it again. And you just touch it. And if you're concerned about bridging the pads again, you could just, again, just run it down the middle. And clean everything up. If you need to move something, same thing. You just touch it. it pops right off. Put it on this end. Touch it. And you'll see it melt. It's just enough time to see that you get a good joint. Let's switch over and let's do some motor pads because the motor pads are usually a fun time. So again, we're gonna clean the tip here. Make sure everything looks good. Got our motor wires. And if you're not familiar with this, the motor wiring order really doesn't matter. I just like to keep it straight for aesthetic reasons when it's on the arm. And then I verify everything in the GUI on the computer. And if I need to reverse a motor or something, I do it in there. So let's say that we're gonna use these three pads right here. So what I'll actually do is I'll lift this up a little bit. And you can see I've already got some solder on here. So if we pretend that we're already fixing, we're out in the field and we're fixing this, I'm gonna wet the tip, and touch the solder to the existing joint. Make sure things look good. And these two could probably use a little more on them. I think I have a lot of old flux on this because I was trying to uh, fix it. Same thing with the motor wires. You're going to want to make sure that you've got some solder on them. These already have a bit because this is an, um, a used motor. But again, you're going to 
grab the wire with your tweezer and then you're gonna align it to the side. So this ESC actually has little grooves in the pads and that's so that you can actually touch the motor, touch the wire right to the pad and you kind of like embed the wire in the side. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give it more surface area to actually stick to the pad. So if you've ever crashed and ripped your motor wires apart and smoked an ESC because of it, this is a good thing to check that you're doing because it will help with the durability for sure. So let me just zoom out here so you can see. Some people use those fancy arms that you can get on Amazon. I've had them in the past, but they always break on me. So I just kind of don't care anymore. But it's whatever works for you. You'll learn that as you get deeper into this. Everybody's going to have an opinion on how to do something. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Now, you didn't see that, but I did. I just got the smallest amount of flux over here on this flight controller. So, not a big deal at all. And like I said, these boards are toast anyway. But if you're working anywhere in the vicinity of the board and doing any kind of soldering, you really need to be aware that these solder, these little pieces of solder can just pop off at any point in time. And it's not a good thing. So, also, I'm really not happy with uh, this joint. Let's see if I could do it better. You want that round ball look, but this one's, I think the wire is a little long. Yeah, that's better. Whoop. Nothing spectacular, but not bad for an old fart. Same thing uh, for when you're uninstalling, you're gonna just wanna grab the wire, heat the side. You can see it just heats really quickly and pull it to the side. Um, now it's heating really almost instantaneously because I have nothing else connected to this board. So inside of here, is a ton of copper and it conducts heat really well. So when you actually have four motors on here and an XT60, it becomes a lot more difficult to heat these joints up because all the heat is escaping out to the motors through all the wiring. So when you're working on this and you've got a full setup, you just wanna be patient. You wanna make sure that you're on the hottest setting you could be on, you wanna make sure that you've got a nice little ball of solder on the end. And the more surface area of the iron that you can get onto the wire, the better. So I have it, let's see, I kinda of have it there up the side. It's not just on the tip, it's on the side too. So what I'm doing is I'm kinda of like, you kinda of end up kissing the side of the the wire. So I'm, I'm trying to get, you know, and, and as I want it to heat up more, I'm actually going deeper on the iron. Like I'm using more of the side to try to heat this. And you can see it heats really quickly. And if I wanted to do a little less heating, I could just kind of use the tip. And that works just as well. And I really recommend you guys, uh, if you're not good at soldering, they have these kits on Amazon. They're like $7 and it's basically this, but without anything expensive on it. And you can just practice. And like some of the best things, one of the best things you could do is practice and get comfortable. Like when you're, when you're doing a bunch of pads here, like these, these clean pads and you're in the middle of building, you can kind of just like run the iron 
Let's see if I can do it without moving everything. You can kind of run the iron across while feeding it and get yourself a nice base layer to save time. You don't want to practice that on a $90 ESC. You want to practice that on a piece of junk like this or a $7 throwaway piece of junk. Anyway, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful. If I didn't cover something and you want to see it specifically, please drop a comment down below. Also, if you have any tips to share, please share them. I'm interested, and I'll catch you guys on the next video very soon.